It's so exciting to be in Boston at this time in science. There's so much going on and it's become a hub of biotech really for the whole country. It's so important to have this, this kind of nexus of innovation to use many different methods to attack a problem. A lot of times it's the fresh new idea that no one's ever really applied to type 1 diabetes, which can turn out to have the greatest impact. We're trying to prevent the destruction of the beta cells to begin with, which would ideally prevent the onset of type 1 diabetes. We've been working for a number of years, and the aim is to develop an artificial pancreas. What we did is develop a whole new approach to try to create really the first, what I'll call biocompatible materials. I want to do this research to accelerate efforts to find a cure for kidney complications of diabetes. We can now make billions of functional beta cells, which in theory are enough to cure all type 1 diabetics if we could solve how to protect them from the immune system. all the great researchers, these incredibly bright students and postdocs, probably the best hospitals in the world too. And it's an incredibly entrepreneurial community. And those startups enable discoveries to be taken from our laboratory, which are basic science, and get them to the point where they can help people. Boston is a huge hub of research. I mean, it's a mecca for academic research, and we've got biotech and industry right around the corner that really lends not just to the scientific collaborations, but then translating the scientific thought processes into new paradigms in clinical care. The opportunities for collaboration are endless and incredibly exciting. No single lab can have every resource needed for the types of experiments that we're doing. As we're moving forward, experiments are getting more complex. These projects are getting more complex. No one person's going to solve this problem, and people are suffering from the disease. But it helps when there's a, a community of people saying, let's work together to do this. Knowing that the JDRF is in it until the problem is solved is really important. JDRF is fundamentally a collaborative supporting organization. They were willing to go all in once it became evident that the collaborations across the world were necessary in order to make the project that we were doing effective. JDRF has made a tremendous difference. For me personally, as a researcher, the earliest pieces of grant funding I had was from JDRF. That let me pursue my dream of becoming a clinical researcher in diabetic eye disease and that has provided the seed for further growth of the retinal imaging projects we do here. I could name many, many leading scientists now at some point supported by JRF fellowship grants. That's extremely critical because the future of biomedical research is all dependent on next generation scientists. I'd say we would not have been able to do the work without the support of the JDRF. I think in the last now three to four years, we've actually published many, many papers. Those papers have enabled us to really elucidate a lot of the biological mechanisms, which I hope will be helpful to the whole world. Having the support of JDRF really helps the lab to focus and to really feel like behind the work that we're doing, there is a real disease and there is a real application and there is a real patient. JDRF's help really allowed us to accelerate our research forward much more dramatically. I'm hoping that my research will be able to prevent type 1 diabetes from occurring in the first place. That will be the ultimate therapeutic. I am a physician scientist at heart. Therefore, my ultimate goal is to improve patients' outcomes, meaning that the patients with diabetes will live longer and happier lives. So the dream we have would be to actually develop a therapy that could allow patients to forget they have diabetes. So something that would provide a long-term or ideally a lifetime cure. I'm very focused on trying to cure this disease. This is a solvable problem. We can solve it by using modern genetic manipulation and make cells that the patient will accept. And then there will be a day when people will throw away their pumps and continuous glucose monitors. So I wake up every day thinking that's my job. <laughs>